I've been waking up early, and this isn't a speech about the hustle. I'm actually not doing it on purpose. I just somehow stumbled into a sleeping pattern that roughly resembles that of a productive person. Anyway, if I'm up, I will bang on some classical tunes because I reckon techno is just a bit aggressive for that time of day, and I'll go for a little stroll. It's pretty peaceful that time of day, so I'll just say aye to some geese. Thank the powers above that I actually woke up that morning because that's always a good start and just ease into the day. Side note, classical music, like, I don't know, some piano or some shit, it actually just goes with early mornings, like, it's like Planet Earth's official soundtrack for waking up. Anyway, maybe this whole intro is a bit of a cliche actually, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's true. So, this is walk number one of at least two each day, or if I want to try and display technical knowledge, I might call it non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, which is basically the encompassing term for all activity outside of direct exercise. And that's one of the things allowing me to lose weight at a decent rate without dropping my calories too low. So I could have saved you all that time and just said, if you want to get lean, try and walk around more, but let's face it, what kind of animal? would want to miss out on seeing steam rising from a coffee in 120 frames per second. If you're not enjoying this image, we cannot be mates. And that's me writing a to-do list because I'm a fucking cliche. Hi everyone, I'm Imi Enrique Iglesias Sunnies and this is episode 2 of Ibiza Shreds. I've actually named the series that because making kind of good progress with it and I think that I'll actually be fully shredded like to the bone by Ibiza. I may continue cutting after it but probably not. For now that's what I'm going to aim for so it's five weeks left. I'm going to do a physique update. I realise that the original physique update, I don't know if it's an update if it's the original, in the first episode it was just in a shit place right? there was just no light, it was all washed out. It's wank so now we're on the balcony of Del Chateau and the, uh, the, uh, the, it'll be about three and a half week progress. I'll take these fucking white glasses off. I feel lean-ish, mate. I feel, I feel quite lean. What? You have to shake it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel like in like five weeks time I'll be pretty fucking nasty, mate. Yeah, quite nasty. Be vacuum. offensive, mate. There'll be people saying, You'd be quite cadaverous. I'll be, I'll be, my, my physique will be causing inflammatory responses yeah. in people. Not biologically, but like, you know, like, wow, that's an inflammatory comment. Yeah. My physique's going to be the equivalent of an inflammatory comment. Yeah, it is. All right. Uh, let's talk about body weights, just a quick update on that one. Yeah. Okay, so first weigh-in was 178.6 pounds, and then the following day my weight dropped by 5 pounds and has steadily declined from then. I'm not really sure what happened with that high one, but as it's been pretty steady ever since, I'm just going to pretty much ignore it. And I did just get off a plane like 10 hours before that weight, to be fair. Anyway, currently at 169.4 pounds. And I reckon I have about five to seven pounds to lose before I'm like ridiculously lean. How to avoid muscle slash strength loss when cutting? It's a big question, man. Sleep, loads, get enough rest, appropriate size deficit, nutrient dense diet, and probably the placebo impact of assuming that you're gonna lose strength i would say that's like one of the main factors really because it actually doesn't have to be that way for the vast majority of your cut yeah maybe in the depths of a cut but certainly in the first like 60 plus percent of your cut i don't think you should really be exp experiencing much if any strength loss at all the final thing a structured program how to stop overeating while cutting one if you're constantly going over your calories they might be too low to begin with if they're actually not manageable it would be more productive to be able to stick to a 
a more shallow deficit than it would to keep fucking up on a larger deficit. Second thing, don't stock shit in your house. Like, keep busy. Don't like sit next to the cupboard when there's like, you know that there's cocoa pops the other side of that door. You have to just be wise with your, your shopping like that. Step three, introduce some kind of accountability. Like if you have a date booked, i.e. Ibiza, holiday, festival, photo shoot in your bathroom, mind you that's probably not gonna count for accountability. Something like that that's gonna make you actually stick to stuff. Because like sometimes it's, it's things that you can actually manage, but sometimes it is just you being a fuck. So if you are being a fuck, don't be a fuck. Be an adult. I've been told to not eat fruit while cutting, but I don't want scurvy, mate. Any thoughts? Whoever is telling you to not eat fruit, when cutting, bulking, or generally in any situation in life, I would distance myself from, from that person. Thoughts on losing fat without calorie counting? Definitely within the realms of possibility, because believe it or not, people did lose fat before my fitness pal. It still requires a deficit, but you don't have to consciously be counting up calories. If you are typically at maintenance, as in if your weight is quite consistent, and then all of a sudden you start being more active whilst still sticking to your, your typical diet you will lose weight yet you haven't counted calories there's a million ways you can do it without specifically counting so i don't think everyone should count really if you can get away with not tracking and you're not particularly asked about being like a hundred percent fucking optimal it's worth doing man. tracking for some people can just open up a fucking a world of like obsessiveness and shit and then you end up in calorie prison doing a life sentence mate <laughs> That's not where you want to be. <laughs> Doing hard time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting bummed everywhere. Hard time with the district calorie attorney. Man. Ways to deal with fatigue other than depending on caffeine slash other stims, or is it just necessary evil? In some sense, it's a necessary evil. Obviously, your energy levels aren't going to be as high when you're on lower calories as they are when you're on higher calories, particularly if you're actually lean. Like, if you're a fat fuck, I mean, if you've got a high body fat percentage, then it, it won't affect you as much to begin with. It's definitely going to be there. The main thing you can try and do is get enough sleep. Secondly, I would train at times of the day when you have more energy probably towards the front end of the day if that's possible and then if that's still an issue I, I think about trying to time your calories and carbs as well around your workout it's pretty much all you can do man the rest, the rest of the time you just got to get on with it mate eat soleros man to keep the body temp down would you recommend a body recomposition plan as opposed to cutting for a skinny fat physique i would typically always recommend just all out cutting because usually if you're skinny fat it means you've been doing fuck all for a while and you just need to get into something and see progress and you don't need this ambiguous goal of like trying to gain a little bit of muscle and lose a little bit of fat aim to cut so that you get good quick visible feedback which is going to motivate you to continue and maybe maybe if you're lucky you'll build some muscle in the process but that should just be a bonus one also depends how skinny fat you are it depends on the, on the person really yeah it, it depends like because the skinny fat is a spectrum man okay by case basis in it that's a cop out but yeah all right should your deficit vary between a cut and a mini cut you can probably get away with a slightly greater deficit on a mini cut because you're not there for the same actual duration it's not a proper long ass cut so you're probably not going to see the actual negative effect of a deficit anywhere near as much if at all strength loss fatigue all that kind of stuff so yeah i reckon you could definitely get away with higher if you really want to do a short sharp cut say you're doing 10 days you could you could honestly do like 700 cal deficit and you'd be sweet man I've got four weeks until Ibiza what would you do <laughs> all the best so questions bad. all so the best bad. questions start with a time yeah, limit mate Ibiza. let me just say this right notice the trend one think about next year's holiday prior to being like three or four weeks out from it man. start thinking about next year's holiday now that would be my advice like fuck off i for this year obviously if you want to do some like last minute emergency shred operations like go for it be my guest but you ain't gonna do much like the whole point is that you're supposed to you're supposed to like notice things before they come up and slap you in the fucking face man that's like basic being a human and being able to like actually take into consideration upcoming events like yeah all right go on what was the question so what was the question that was it pretty much yeah yeah best condition if you like what can i do well all, all you can do is go in a turbo deficit yeah and lift like fuck yeah well, that's all you can do man but i can't you. save your gains though you, yeah, you're yeah. either gonna not burn enough fat not lose enough fat or lose enough fat and probably lose some muscle as well. That's probably not that much of a disaster because you're probably going to lose it in Ibiza anyway. So, yeah, I mean, being in good shape, point is, part of your life. point is, give yourself more time than you need, right, on any cut ever. More time than you need on any cut ever because you don't realize how much fat is like gathered. Like, if you think, oh, I've got five pounds to lose, you've got 10 pounds to lose.
you know, over prepare like. So you can over deliver. You can turn up to Ocean Beach, fucking shredded like a motherfucker, being offensive to everyone. All right. What's your go-to alcoholic drink when you go out drinking on a cup? Gin and slim my tonic. You look like you got something to say. No, no, you don't really go out drinking, do you? Drinking as an activity, like. Nah, nah, nah. yeah, I don't like go out. Oh yeah, yeah, go for a fucking day session with the lads and get in the fucking beer garden and ripping each other about fucking you Nah, I'm not in that vibe, but uh, still have the occasional alcoholic beverage you want to do. It's a gin and slimline motherfucking tonic or an espresso martini, but I don't think they're the best for cows. They're just fucking tasty, mate. How to restore your metabolism to normal after a cut? In all likelihood, your metabolism isn't actually quote unquote damaged. It's just your TD is lowered from being a lower body weight and from maybe like your neat adapting to your lower calories. Like you'd have to have like really fucked it for a long time to actually suffer like significant metabolic slowing. It'll just come back naturally when you start putting calories back in pretty much. It's not a thing, you just have to set your calories according to what your new maintenance is for now and then as you increase them so too will your TDE. Protein bars whilst cutting? As a treat like I wouldn't depend on them too much because they're just not the best for keeping you full. Those calories if you spend them on something else you could feel a lot more full from them like so. It depends on how close to your appetite your calories are basically. If you find it easy to stick to your calories then yeah but if not then I'd definitely be sticking to fucking watermelon cottage cheese mate. There's other people we are on our way to Pure Gym and today is arms, isolations and abs. It is day three in split. I will re-upload the program for anyone who missed it last time because they're shit subscribers and they're not even uh, dedicated to the cause and watching all my videos. Uh, so the full thing will be downloadable again in the description of this video. I'm going to hop into a, a voiceover, mate. Some ASMR shit on you all. Today we're doing biceps. Okay, so arms, shoulder isolations, and abs. Definitely not your typical session. You could actually call it just a loose ends workout as it's pretty much everything that I view as essential but don't fit into my upper or lower workouts. So I do like starting this workout now with some direct arm work because I found that when I was doing PPL, I would often end up ditching biceps or triceps at the end of my push and pull workouts or at least just doing some shitty subpar sets. I also never previously included abs in my programs as compulsory exercises in specific workouts. I would just get to them whenever I felt like getting to them and it's obviously resulted in me hitting them probably not as often as I should. So structuring my program now this way at least means that I'm hitting arms and abs without fail once every three training days. So after some dumbbell bicep curls, I'll go into dumbbell tricep skull crushers and then on some barbell curls. So I'm treating these as quote unquote concentration curls, keeping my back flat against the wall and pinning my elbows slightly in front of me. So I'm just keeping them still. And it's kind of like imitating one of those arm blaster things that you see like Arnie used to wear and people who want to be Arnie still wear. But obviously the advantage is you don't have to carry one of those big BDSM looking contraptions into the gym with you, so that's great. Um, next, I'll do some overhead cable extensions. And really, if I was gonna be like crossing T's and dotting I's, I would make this a rope pull down extension since my first tricep exercise is also kind of an overhead extension. This way I'm doing kind of two overhead, whereas I could do one overhead and one like pull down, but I think that's fucking overkill, mate. I don't really think that fucking matters. So anyway, I just feel these better and I prefer doing them. So now I do them. So after those, my shoulder isolations start with dumbbell lateral raises and I've always gone pretty light for these. And I, if you take all of the momentum out of the lift and you actually just like concentrate on raising from the elbow in a sense or at least leading with the elbow so you're not doing like these weird like chicken trying to fly flappy things you don't really need to do any kind of heavyweight at all you can really you can make it work like so after these i'll do one normal set and then one drop set on the lateral raise machine Alright, next up, abs, so I'm keeping it pretty simple, I just do two exercises and five sets of each, so I actually just alternate which order I do these in, but this week I was starting with decline reverse crunches, and I say reverse crunch because that's really how they should be looked at 
as opposed to being a leg raise variation. So you're really thinking about crunching up from the bottom and rolling the whole weight of your pelvis and legs right up until the abs are completely contracted. At the bottom, I will actually relax my abs. So you'll see like my back arches naturally. And then in a way you're kind of increasing the range of motion because your abs have to tense then to straighten your torso out. So next I'm using the same bench, pretty much flipping around and doing some decline crunches. So I usually just hold my arms out above my head because you don't really need to use a weight like if you've got massive arms like me because they are the weight and you just move them further away from your center if you want to increase the resistance. Another thing I'll do to increase the resistance is I will adjust the height of the step that I have the bench on which just makes the bench steeper. And as with most exercises, I will pretty much just do my final set to failure and that is that. So again, full program downloadable in the description. It's fucking free, mate. Jordan Lenny is my hero.